Hebrews has uh, at least a dozen passages that refute once saved, always saved. Chapter 6 and 10 seem to just say bluntly, you can lose your salvation. For in the case of those who have once been enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and have been made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away, it is impossible to renew them again to repentance since they again crucify to themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. Hebrews 6 is another, I believe, just categorically clear passage uh, that teaches that people can once be saved and actually forfeit salvation. There are three popular responses by proponents of eternal security to the warning passages. The first is, these are not true believers that are being addressed. The second is, These texts are not talking about the loss of salvation. They're talking about the loss of rewards. The third is God is using these warnings to get believers to persevere, even though he knows they cannot help but persevere. The book of Hebrews is very clearly written to Christians. That's that's clear on every single page of the book of Hebrews. It's very difficult to say that one who has been enlightened and tasted the heavenly gift and made a partaker of the Holy Spirit and has been sanctified by the blood of Christ and is a brother, it's hard to say that those people have never been genuinely converted. I don't think there's any way around this being an apostasy text because even though the word is tasted is used it means really experienced i mean it says in the same book that christ tasted death well that doesn't mean he had a little bit of taste of death it means he died when it says they receive the holy spirit the greek word that is used there is the same word that's used in hebrews 3 1 of holy brethren who had received the heavenly calling did they receive the heavenly calling or not you know hebrews 6 4 had been enlightened tasted of the heavenly gift that's definitely born again and made partakers of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said the world can't receive the Holy Spirit. Paul said the natural man doesn't receive the things of the Holy Spirit. Yet these folks had received the Holy Spirit. It says it's impossible to renew them again to repentance. Again to repentance? Again means they had repented initially. Even to right to the end in Hebrews 13, where he talks about the regular practice of the Christian faith that they are doing in Rome. So no, he's not writing to non-Christians. Verse 6, having fallen away, it's impossible to renew them again to repentance since they again crucified to themselves the Son of God and put him to open shame. The idea that we could be beyond retrieval reminds us of Proverbs 29. Someone can be rebuked and uh, stiff-necked. After so many rebukes, he can get to the point where he's broken beyond the possibility of change. That's a scary passage. Every day that you uh, sin is a day that you are getting closer and closer to that point of reprobation. You can't keep on living in a way that hurts him, that crucifies him again. You can't do that. Think about it this way. Every sin is a sin for which Jesus had to die. How could you ever take a laissez-faire view of your sin once you knew that? You helped crucify Christ. And that's why in Hebrews we hear about the apostate re-crucifying Christ by the sins that they were committing of rejecting and turning away from Christ. The Word of God says in Hebrews chapter 5, starting off in verse 11, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Why? For or because he is a babe. First and foremost, it is imperative that we identify the audience being addressed. Notice the statement made in verse 12. Ye have need that one teach you again, implying what? That they have already been taught the first principles of the oracles of God. Salvation and the sufficient sacrifice of Christ has already been expounded unto them. These are saved individuals who lack spiritual maturity spiritual babes that have yet to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, 
let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. These saved individuals are admonished to leave the principles of the doctrine of Christ and go on unto perfection. This is a call to spiritual maturation. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works is implying that the foundation has already been laid. Again, they have already been instructed concerning Jesus' superior and sufficient sacrifice, which was once for all. They are encouraged to build upon this foundation and go on unto perfection, maturing in their faith. Verse 3 says, And this will we do if God permit or if God allows. Why? For or because it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, referring to who? those described in verses 4 and 5, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. If these believers fall away, if they draw back, if they regress, there comes a point of no return where all that remains is severe divine chastisement. The impossibility of renewal signifies that they are beyond being reasoned with. They have reached a point of no return regarding being restored by human effort. This caution is akin to the warning found in Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 26 says, For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. They can either leave the principles and go on unto perfection or fall away and draw back unto those dead works which will inevitably result in judgment from God. Two potential outcomes, blessing or cursing. Look at verse seven. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it and bringeth forth herbs, meat for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth what? Blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto what? Cursing, whose end is to be burned. But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you, and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. If the saved fall away and draw back unto those Old Testament sacrifices, those dead works, they are effectively what? Crucifying to themselves the Son of God afresh and putting him to an open shame. Attempting to reason with or renew these individuals unto repentance is impossible. Why? They are beyond restoration at that point. This passage is in no way implying that a believer who falls away loses their salvation. Rather, it is an exhortation to Hebrew believers to go on unto perfection, maturing in their faith, growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Failure to do so would result in the loss of salvation? No. Divine discipline, the loss of blessing in this time, and rewards in eternity. If you are not 100% certain that you're going to heaven when you die, I encourage you to watch the video in the description below, How to Be Saved from Hell, The Only Way to Heaven, and Be Saved Today. God bless.